Hello and welcome back to Coco Sleep, a podcast of original children's bedtime stories and meditations designed to make bedtime a dream. Ella Cat, I really hope you're listening tonight because this episode is for you. When you sent in your review with the request that we write a story about your cats visiting Dreamland, our writer Gillian conjured up a brilliant story, and tonight I'm delighted to read it for you. Listeners, please keep on sending in your reviews and story ideas, and maybe it'll be your name I'll shout out next. Back to tonight, and we're going to meet two cats called Ginger and Snowy. They live next door to someone we've already met. Hector! As you know, he is a beautiful, funny and kind golden retriever, and he loves hanging out with his super energetic best friend, Sonny. One day, Hector and Sonny are recalling their magical adventures in Dreamland, and the cats say that they wish they could have a magical adventure too. And within seconds, their wish comes true. But before we hear about Ginger and Snowy's journey into another world and the wonderful things that happen there, let's take a few minutes to get comfy and relax like a cat. Slowly stretch out your arms and legs and breathe in. Arch your back and point your toes and then breathe out a lovely big sigh as you relax. Next, wrinkle your nose and twitch your lips and cheeks a few times, as if you had whiskers. Now, wrinkle and relax your forehead. Close your eyes. Take another lovely deep breath in and let it out slowly. Now it's time for me to start reading Cats in Dreamland. By Gillian Rogerson. On a wonderfully lazy day in June, two cats were sleeping peacefully in a shady spot in their garden. The names of the cats were Ginger and Snowy, and they were best friends. They loved playing games and exploring their garden and their neighbours' gardens too. But most of all, they simply adored sleeping outside on a warm summer's day. As the cats dozed happily in the soft grass, a familiar noise broke the silence. Snowy, the youngest cat with fur the colour of freshly fallen snow, woke up and lifted her head. She recognised the noise. It was a happy bark, and it had come from the friendly golden retriever who lived next door. His name was Hector, and the cats loved talking to him. Hector barked again. Snowy smiled and stood up. She wanted to talk to Hector and hear what he'd been up to. He was always off on an adventure of some kind. She knew Ginger would want to talk to Hector too, but before she could gently wake her friend, a different bark sounded out which woke Ginger up. Ginger opened his beautiful amber-coloured eyes and asked, Is that Sonny I can hear? Sonny was a cocker spaniel and she often visited Hector. The two dogs were great pals, just like Ginger and Snowy. Hector and Sonny barked again and said they had something to tell the cats. Ginger and Snowy leapt onto the fence between the gardens, waved their paws at the dogs and said hello. Hector's eyes were shining with joy. He said, You'll never guess where we went yesterday. He told the cats how he and Sonny had been to the park the day before and how they'd met a silver-furred squirrel called Sydney. The squirrel had led them through a magical tree and into a place called Dreamland, a place where dreams came true. 
The cats asked Hector and Sonny to tell them everything. Ginger and Snowy jumped down from the fence into Hector's garden and settled themselves on the grass in front of the dogs. Between them, Sonny and Hector told the cats about the amazing adventure they'd had in Dreamland and the animals they had met. The dogs had seen lions playing tennis, flamingos dancing, and kangaroos jumping joyfully on a bouncy castle. Sonny chuckled and said, Don't forget about the stream made out of gravy, Hector. Hector grinned, licked his lips, and said he would never forget that. The cats were amazed at the dog's adventure and said they would love to travel to Dreamland too. Hector said they should visit the park and look for Sydney, the silver-furred squirrel. Ginger said they couldn't go to the park because their owners would be coming into the garden soon for their morning cuddle and the cats had to be there for that. They never missed a cuddle. Maybe you can go to Dreamland another time, Sonny said kindly. Or maybe you can go there now, said a voice behind them. The cats turned around to see who had spoken. They saw a squirrel standing there. His fur was silver. The dogs recognised the squirrel and told the cat, it was Sydney. Sydney waved his paw at the surprised cats and said, You don't have to visit the park to enter Dreamland. You can get to it through the cat flap in your kitchen door. Would you like to go there now? But what about our owners? Ginger asked. They'll be coming out of the house soon. Hector said, Oh, I forgot to tell you that time freezes when you go into dreamland. And to get back to this world, you have to bark three times and just like magic, you're back in a second. The cats liked the idea of freezing time whilst they were on an adventure, but weren't so sure about barking because they didn't know how to bark. Sydney saw their concerned looks and said they could meow three times instead and that would work just as well. He smiled at the cats and said, Well, what do you think? Would you like to visit Dreamland? You can return home any time you want to. Ginger and Snowy looked at each other. They broke into huge happy smiles and said they would love to visit Dreamland straight away. Follow me, Sydney said. With great ease, he jumped over the fence and into the cat's garden. Ginger and Snowy said goodbye to the dog, climbed over the fence, and followed the squirrel. The cats saw Sydney running towards their kitchen door. As he got closer to the cat flap, he waved his paw at it, and the paint on the little entrance changed from blue to sparkling silver. Sydney hopped through the cat flap. The cats followed him. Ginger and Snowy entered a different world. A world full of magic and wonder. They were in an enormous garden that looked like their own but much, much bigger. The cats looked in amazement at the vast expanse of grass and beautiful flower beds that overflowed with brightly coloured blossoms. There were benches and sun lounges dotted around, 
as well as patches of long grass and a huge laundry basket full of freshly dried blankets, all perfect places for sleepy cats to snooze. There were trees, bushes and even a shed to explore. In the distance, they could see some animals moving around, but they were too far away for Ginger and Snowy to see exactly what they were doing. Sydney welcomed the cats to Dreamland and said that anything they dreamed about could come true there. He looked at Ginger and asked what he dreamed about. Ginger smiled and said, I dream about sleeping in the warm sunshine all day long. And I dream about sitting on the windowsill, watching people going by and then having a long sleep. I often dream about snuggling down in the shed when it's raining and having a nap. And sometimes, I dream that I'm lying in my cosy basket near the fire and having a rest with my eyes closed. Ah, <sighs> he sighed happily and said he loved sleeping and dreamed about it a lot. Snowy said, I liked sleeping too, but I love climbing trees, playing games, chasing falling leaves around the garden, and sticking my paw in a bowl of cream and licking it all off. Yum. Sydney told them they could make all of their dreams come true. He told them to explore the garden and talk to the other animals who were there about their dreams. He reminded them to meow three times when they wanted to return home. And with that, he waved goodbye and scampered off through the grass. Snowy asked Ginger what they should do first. Ginger yawned and said, Let's find somewhere to sleep. That long grass looks very cosy. Snowy was always ready for a sleep, but she wanted to explore the magical garden as well. She said, Ginger, it would be interesting to talk to the other animals, don't you think? I wonder what their dreams are. We might meet some funny animals, like Hector and Sunny did. She smiled kindly at Ginger and added, But we can do that later after you've had a sleep. Ginger was a curious cat, and he wanted to know what the other animals in the garden were doing and what their dreams were. He told Snowy that sleep could wait. It was time for an adventure. The two cats set off through the garden to see who they could meet. They came across a group of hedgehogs who were wearing boots and standing beneath a tree. It wasn't an ordinary kind of tree because the leaves were all the colours of the rainbow and they glittered brightly in the sunshine. The hedgehogs were looking at the leaves as though waiting for something to happen. Ginger and Snowy said hello to the hedgehogs and asked what they were doing. One of the hedgehogs said, We're waiting for our dream to come true. We love splashing about in muddy puddles and thought it would be amazing if we could jump into puddles made from different coloured rain. We made a wish and asked for a rainbow rain tree. He looked back at the tree and held his paw out, waiting 
to catch the first rainbow raindrop. Ginger frowned and was about to say that rain came from clouds, not trees. But before he could say a word, the tree shook its brightly coloured leaves and rainbow raindrops began to fall from each one. The hedgehogs cheered and jigged happily from side to side. The rain grew heavier and heavier, and soon puddles in different colours appeared on the ground. The colours shimmered and glimmered in the sun, red, orange, purple, blue, pink, green, gold and silver. The hedgehogs let out whoops of delight and jumped in and out of the puddles. They invited the cats to join them. The hedgehogs were having so much fun that Ginger and Snowy immediately leapt into a purple puddle. In and out the cats jumped, from one brightly coloured puddle to another. It was great fun, and the cats purred loudly in delight. The cats played for a little while longer, but then decided they wanted to explore the garden further. So they left the hedgehogs to their rainbow puddles and went on their way. Ginger and Snowy padded through the grass and soon met a line of tigers who were queuing outside a building. The cats had never seen the building before and asked the tigers what it was and why they were waiting outside it. One of the tigers said it was a beauty salon and it would be opening soon. The tigers would be going inside for some pampering. The tiger smiled at the little cats and said, We all deserve some me time. It's what we tigers dream about all the time. The salon is open for cats of all sizes, big and small. Why don't you join us for some pampering? Oh, look, the doors are opening. Snowy whispered to Ginger. Do you know what pampering is? Ginger said he didn't, but he would love to find out. They joined the end of the queue and followed the tigers inside. They were met by a calm-looking panther, wearing a pale pink uniform. She led Ginger and Snowy over to a bathing area, where two silver baths were waiting. In a soothing voice, the panther said, Would you like to have a relaxing soak in our baths? They're full of warm milk and honey. Take your time, there's no need to rush. When you're ready, climb out of the baths and join me in the pampering area. She moved smoothly away as though floating above the floor. The cats climbed into the baths and lay back in the warm liquid. It was the perfect temperature, and they let out soft purrs of happiness. Quiet music floated from unseen speakers in the walls, and twinkling fairy lights appeared on the ceiling. Ginger and Snowy relaxed more and more in the lovely warm milk. After a soothing soap, Ginger and Snowy climbed out of the baths and gave themselves a shake. 
two fluffy dressing gowns magically appeared before them. The cats put them on and tied the belts loosely. They walked into the room next door. The peaceful panther was waiting for them and asked them to sit in the padded chairs at her side. The cats settled themselves in the chairs, and a moment later, another panther walked through the doorway. The panthers gently patted a creamy fruit mask onto the cats' faces. Then, they painted the cats' nails and gently brushed their fur. The panthers put on some soft music and left the cats to relax for a while. Ginger let out a yawn and said he liked being pampered. Snowy said she did too. A little while later, the panthers returned and gently wiped the face masks off. They asked the cats if they would like bows for their fur, and if so, which colour? Ginger chose a pink bow, and Snowy went for an orange one. The panthers tucked the bows behind the cat's ears and thanked them for visiting the beauty salon. Ginger and Snowy left the salon feeling very relaxed indeed. They wondered if they should have a nap before continuing on their adventure. There were many comfy places to choose from in the magical garden. Before they could decide, a cheerful chimpanzee jogged over to them and asked if they liked solving puzzles. The cat said they did. Great, the chimpanzee said. I love solving them too, and I often dream about doing a treasure hunt with lots of clues to solve. Have you ever done a treasure hunt before? The cat said they hadn't, and as they spoke, a small silver card floated over to them on a breeze and landed on the chimpanzee's arm. His face lit up with joy. Oh, I wonder if this is the first clue of a treasure hunt. He read the words on the card and said, Yes, it is a clue. We have to find somewhere relaxing to rest, a place where a quiet drumming sound can be heard. The chimpanzee had no idea what that meant and asked the cats to help him. Ginger thought he might know what it meant and led them over to the garden shed. He pushed the door open and walked inside. There was a pile of big, soft cushions on the floor. Ginger walked over to them and sat down. He told Snowy and the chimpanzee to join him. The chimpanzee perched himself on a cushion and said, Hmm, now what? Is there a clue somewhere in here? Are you sure this is the right place? I can't hear any drumming. Ginger held his paw up and asked him to listen. Rain began to gently fall on the roof of the shed. Pitter-patter. The raindrops fell more quickly. The sound got a little louder, and soon it sounded like a drumbeat. The soothing sound caused the chimpanzee to smile softly. He said he felt all cosy and snug inside the shed. 
he asked Ginger how he knew rain was on the way. Ginger said, I had a feeling in my whiskers. When I get the feeling at home, I'll go into the shed and wait for the rain. The sound helps me fall asleep. I have a pink velvet cushion that my owner made for me. He stopped talking and blinked in surprise. There was a pink cushion right in front of him, and it looked exactly like the one from home. How did it get there? Ginger picked up the cushion. Beneath it, right there on the floor, was another silver card. It was the next clue. The cats and the chimpanzee continued to solve one clue after another. Their last clue led them to a tree at the bottom of the garden. Resting against the trunk of the tree was a sparkling silver treasure chest. Together, the new friends carefully opened the treasure chest. It was full of ripe yellow bananas. The chimpanzee cheered in jubilation and did a happy dance. He loved bananas more than any other food. He said he was going to share his treasure with the rest of the animals in the garden. He gave two bananas to the cats, grabbed as many as he could carry, and ran off, ready to share his prize. Ginger and Snowy ate their bananas, and decided they were the tastiest ones they'd ever seen. The two cats discussed where they would like to go next. Snowy said, We haven't made our own dreams come true yet, but I'm not sure how we make that happen. Ginger replied, I've been having such a wonderful time that I'd quite forgotten about our dreams. Snowy, you love playing games, so why don't you think about your favourite one and see what happens? Snowy closed her eyes and thought all about the fun game she played at home. There were so many of them and she loved them all. She opened her eyes and told Ginger she couldn't decide which game was her favourite. Ginger smiled softly at his lovely friend and told her she didn't need to decide on just one game. He told Snowy to turn around and see what had happened while she'd had her eyes closed. Snowy turned around. She gasped in astonishment. Some of the games she loved to play were set out on the grass, like a fun-filled obstacle course. Snowy said softly, It's perfect. Just. Perfect. The two cats began to play on the amazing adventure course. Firstly, they moved towards a small tree that had strings dangling from its branches. On the end of the strings were large feathers that moved gently in the warm breeze. Ginger and Snowy jumped towards the feathers and joyfully batted them back and forth. As their paws touched the feathers, a musical note rang out. The cat soon got into a rhythm with their batting movements and created a joyful song that echoed across the huge garden. 
the cats moved on to the next game. It involved dashing through open cardboard boxes and running through wooden tube tunnels. Every time they ran through a box or a tube, it would light up and make a loud, cheering noise. It was tremendous fun, and the cats ran through the boxes and tubes many times. Next, Ginger and Snowy jumped through a long line of cat flaps, each one painted in a different colour. When they jumped through the last one, Two bowls of cold water appeared on the grass. The cats lapped the bowls clean. Ginger and Snowy started to grow a little tired, but there was one more activity for them. Ahead of them was a big scratching post that reached towards the sky. The cats loved having a good stretch. They moved towards the post and placed their paws against its soft surface. They moved their paws back and forth, chuckling cheerfully. When they were satisfied that they'd done enough scratching, they sat down on the soft grass and let out long, long yawns. Snowy blinked her eyes tiredly and said they should find somewhere wonderful in the magical garden for Ginger to sleep, because that would make her dreams come true. We could sleep right here, Ginger said. He could see how tired his friend was, and he didn't want to make a fuss. Snowy said she had some energy left, and they couldn't leave Dreamland without finding the most perfect place to sleep. She held her paw out and took hold of Ginger's paw. The two friends strolled around the garden. They weren't the only ones who were feeling tired. Other animals were settling themselves down to sleep and had found many comfortable places to rest. Lions were lying on garden benches. Badgers were curled up on cushions next to water fountains. Tiny ladybirds were snuggly sleeping inside flower pots, and snoozing butterflies rested on the velvety petals of pink roses. Ginger and Snowy explored the garden and thought about the many places they could sleep. Ginger said the laundry basket looked the comfiest place, and she did love the smell of blankets when they had been dried on the washing line. They walked towards the laundry basket. It was much bigger than the one back home, and had a ladder attached to the side of it. Still holding paws, the tired cats climbed up the ladder and into the basket. Once inside, they pressed their paws into the fragrant blankets, turned around a few times, and then laid down snugly in the soft material. The cats let out a long, blissful sigh. They were cosy and snug, and ever so happy. They closed their eyes and settled down some more 
in the blanket. Ginger said sleepily, I can smell home on these blankets. He opened his eyes and looked at his good friend, Snowy. She had her eyes open too. Ginger didn't need to say anything. Snowy knew what her good friend was thinking because she was thinking the same thing. She said, Do you want to go home? I do. Dreamland is a wonderful place, and I hope we can come back another time. But home is where I want to be right now. Ginger agreed. The cats let out three slow, sleepy meows. In a second, they were back home and lying on the grass in their garden. Hector and Sonny peeped through a gap in the fence and asked if the cats had enjoyed their visit to dreamland. The cats were too tired to talk, so nodded sleepily instead. At that moment, their owners came out of the house and walked over to their beloved cats. They scooped them into their arms and took a seat on the comfy garden chairs. The owners softly stroked the cat's little faces, looking somewhat puzzled by the bows tucked behind the cat's ears. Ginger looked over at Snowy and said, I've had a wonderful time in dreamland with you. I wonder if we'll have any other magical adventures. He had a feeling they might. Snowy didn't answer, because she was already fast asleep.